Hello, it's Richard at Richard's Guitars. So, here we go. It's, it's first guitars. Um, the importance, this isn't just an overview of one particular product, although it is. I'm going to talk about the, the first yellow GCRC. Um, it means first guitars are an incredibly relevant product in my whole history and development from going from what I'd call mainstream retail um, to what I do now. Um, and um, I'm not going to labour on about this whole what I see is the difference between what we, you know we, what we consider as mainstream and things which just what we consider as off centre. To me, the things that are off centre are. The things that are not so worthy of my praise or recommendation. I mean, I'm I'm here to just recommend great guitars, not to categorise them, if you like, as off scent or in scent. Um, so, about 15 years ago, it must be 15 years ago now, um, I got a phone call from the director of the UK distributor, who are still the, the UK distributor now, and his name is Keith Twine. So hello Keith, how are you? I hope you're well, hope you're keeping well. Um, now Keith Twine uh, was and is um, the most lovely guy and um, he appreciated what we were doing in those days. It was, my business then was called Regent Guitars and um, he was very keen to know, look, how can we be part of this? How can we be doing, and, th and they were distributing crafty guitars. And, um, I kind of said, look, I, I, I can't tell you what makes, you know, I can, I can only hear a guitar and hear its tone and, and tell you what I love about it. And crafted guitars, whilst they are incredibly, you know, well, historically, they're well made and very clean guitars. Unfortunately, tonally, as you go at the price points, they remain very similar. You might get a lot more inlays and, and um, you know, beautiful, they're, they're fantastic at putting all the artwork into their guitars. And that's fine if you want something that looks pretty uh, and they have LR bags pickups so all good but they just weren't my cup of tea so um, what happened was um, he sent me a box of six guitars I'll put that there for a second um, he sent me a box of six guitars and this is literally the history of how first guitars which were then called uh, Stonebridge this is how they came into the UK he says Richard I would like you to try out some guitars they're not yet available in the UK. We've been approached by the, um, the uh, manufacturer to be their representative. Um, we've got a box here and we'd like to send them over to you and get your thoughts on them as to, you know, with a view of whether we should be doing these, whether you think it's something you would support. And, um, and hand on heart, this story remains, although I don't use it anymore, it's, it's kind of decayed really, my forum. Uh, but. I, I would believe that this page still exists somewhere because I documented that day, all those years ago, I documented my thoughts and feelings on what I found. It was such a relevant day. I knew it was a massive day for me personally. Um, so what happened was, I'll, I'll never forget it, we were in my dispatch room and there was me and I picked out the first guitar and uh, let's say it was one of these because it's the same guitar to this day. Uh, this one's the yellow. And I, and I, I gave it a play. And I listened to the bottom note. And I listened to this kind of detail, just as it has to this day. This chime, this detail. And I knew that this was an extraordinary event. I knew it was something that I didn't have in my possession in my shop. And, um, so I gave this one to uh, Martin, and his name's Martin Adam. Hello, Martin Adam. Um, if you look at Martin Adam now, you'll find he's the Yamaha acoustic um, uh, sales director uh, for Yamaha Guitars. So hello, Martin, hope life's good for you. But in those days, he was my acoustic specialist. So I handed him one, and he listened to it. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And, um, and um, then it ended up in the hands of, um, Please don't let me forget his name. Hugh, Hugh. Uh, um, he, I know his name, I'm sorry. He's living in Sweden now, so hopefully he's not watching this. Um, but um, he was my dispatch guy. No, no, what was he at the time? I think he was, uh, oh God, this is terrible. I'm terrible with names anyway. I don't want to destroy the story by forgetting someone's name, so I'm really, really bad now. Um, but um, it was some Hughes, Hughes. His surname was Hughes, but I forgot his first name. Sorry. Um, 
But anyway, and he's a singer-songwriter, and he then went to Sweden to continue his passion for singing-songwriting. Um, so he was a singer-songwriter. Um, Martin was the acoustic specialist in, in that day. He's now the Yamaha product advisor. Um, now, th this is all relevant because all three of us were having this moment and going, what is this? What the heck have we got here? And it was completely unheard of, completely unknown brand. And um, so I got back in touch with um, uh, Keith and we had the conversation. And, and um, I said, look, hey, Keith, you've got me interested. What's, what's the price sort of thing? And what, what are they? Um, he told me the prices and they were just utterly extraordinarily cheap. I mean, they are more expensive now than they were, um, but they're still ridiculously cheap for what they, they are in today's money with, you know, against other guitar competing lines. Um, and I just, I just said to him, this is something that we are going to be, this is something that's going to be great. This is just going to be an exciting adventure. And that is, and we never stopped. Um, we literally never stopped. Um, but, but needless to say that um, uh, Keith uh, and his wonderful, wonderful, uh, there are people in the industry that, that um, you just respect so highly. And Keith Twine was one of those people. And um, so um, now then, so when um, when um, uh, Keith so Keith retired, and uh, unfortunately I had my meltdown moment in my old business, um, and it was it was largely because of this storyline that the fact that we had these brands. I'll, I'll never forget a guy that came into my shop once, um, and this was kind of part of the unthreading of my desire to be in my old business. Um, he came in and he came in for a Taylor guitar and um, he, 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 he travelled up from London I think somewhere like that I'm pretty sure it was London and it was a 50th birthday present to himself and um, he walked into the room and he came back out some time later with a very despondent look on his face and I, I said what's the matter have you not found something he goes yeah he says look he said I've been playing that tape and it was this guitar here, what is now called the Yellow GCRC. Um, he said, I've been playing the Yellow G, what was called the G23 CRC. So it was, it was called at that time a Stonebridge G23 CRC. And um, he says, I've been playing the guitar and I've fallen in love with it. Uh, he said, I've been playing it for the most part, you know, whatever it was, last hour or whatever, I've just been playing this guitar. And just working out in my mind what's the right direction to go. He said ultimately, and this is important from your point of view as well, this is actually a really, really important point. He said, the tailor was a 50th birthday present. I know I've always wanted a tailor, and I know I always will want a tailor, and I know that I can't afford two guitars. So ultimately, I've got to make a decision about where, what I do. And he bought the tailor guitar. I mean, I'm not going to change the story, <laughs> just for the sake of... Um, he bought the tailor guitar, and, and it was kind of like... Yeah, forget the financial aspect of it. It, it, it was quite, I suppose it was interesting and fascinating to hear this kind of pain that he was going through. Um, but it, but it kind of made me aware of branding and marketing. You know, it was a real, a real kind of insight into if you sell a product or if you represent a product that has such a high profile, you know, you've got to enjoy selling it. You've got to enjoy being part of that kind of process. Um, because um, ultimately he bought a Taylor guitar. Yeah, I mean, I'm waffling on as if he did. I didn't make, he, you know, I sold him a guitar. He bought a Taylor. Um, but I, but it was the kind of, it was like, wow, I'm just, what, I've witnessed this guy falling in love with a guitar and he's just not bought it just because he felt so compelled to buy the, the brand. Um, so, um, what the other part of the story is, um, yeah, now another little aspect of this is um, uh, my old. Um, uh, colleague Martin, uh, who Martin Adam, who went on to become the Yamaha um, director, sales product product manager, sales product director, something like that. Um, he went to work for a company called Sheehan's, who some of you will hopefully reasonably fondly remember. Um, they were based in Leicester, and when he went to work at Sheehan's, they introduced. Um, what are now called first guitars into their range. Now these guys were known for being the top acoustic specialists. You know, they had the Taylors, the Martins, the Takaminis, the, all that kind of, all that stuff that you'd expect to see. 
Um, but when Martin joined, I, I will never forget, he doesn't even know how much I monitored this, but I noticed how they started doing what are now called first guitars in their shop. He left. He, he left to become a Yamaha guy. And when he left, they stopped selling first guitars. And that is, gives you another, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I think it's not an important message to give to you that with any kind of in shop environment, you might be given a bit of flexibility as a member of staff to bring your car to the table, your interests and your passion. But very often that isn't allowed. And Martin clearly was given that kind of free reign to, 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 to develop this, this line within, within uh, Sheehan's. Um, but as soon as he left, you need, the, you need someone there who understands the product because in a guitar like Sheehan's at the time, or any of these big shops, unless you've got somebody there that has a passion to kind of inform and to educate and involve you in the brand, that's if you're allowed to, you'll never see brands like Fersh Guitars. And that is exactly what happened in, in, in Sheehan's case. Somebody with a passion came in, he obviously said, look, I really need this product. If you want me involved in your, brand, your, your company brand, I'm going to need the armory, and that is a first guitar. And he clearly, I know the guy. I mean, if I'm misrepresenting you, Martin, if I'm misrepresenting you, Martin, I'll take the video down. Uh, so, but but he, 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 he had a passion for the guitars. We shared that passion. We, we, were, we were both absolutely so in love with this product. Um, but when that person then goes, this passion goes with them. And um, obviously, they would have continued to sell guitars, and it wouldn't have mattered to them, because they would have probably just, it's like the, 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 everything would have just, sealed up behind Martin and life would have carried on as normal selling tailors and Takaminis and whatever else. Um, but it was lovely to see that this chap who I, I respected as a real specialist in acoustic guitars had that passion to carry on selling first guitars even when I closed. Um, so that was cool. So bringing it back up to speed then, because I mean I want to give you a bit of a, bit of a potted history. The, um, <laughs> as if that wasn't obvious already, um, Stonebridge were originally um, given this name Stonebridge on the basis that um, I think it just sounded easy to the ear for the Western audience, the Western market. And the brand is called, I, you'll notice I call it Fersh. Well, I, I believe that the absolute kind of, the way it should be spoken is Fersh, Fersh, or Fersh, something like that. Fersh. Now, I always say it sounds like I'm, when I say it, because I can't say it properly, it sounds like I'm clearing my throat rather badly. So I, um, it sounds a bit wrong when I say it. So I call it Fersh, but I don't think you'll hear that many people calling it Fersh, but I soften the CH, Fersh. For me, it's Fersh. Um, a, a few years ago, they decided, and again, they came to, you know, the UK distributor asked me my view on it. How did I feel about them going to the original factory name rather than the, the westernized name and I was all for it I thought well you know I'd much rather there not be the confusion around the brand um, when I say the confusion I wouldn't want there to be a Fersh and a Stonebridge be um, because I haven't made that very clear uh, unscripted obviously so I'll delete that bit they had deliberately given it this name Stonebridge that was acceptable to the Western ears in Western European market however if they were out of stock of a Stonebridge G23 CRC, the UK distributor would call them up and say, oh, do you have, do you have one? Well, we don't have one of those, but we do have a Fersh. Um, but you can't have a guitar with a different brand name being sent over because then you've got to, it's, it just looks bad, doesn't it? So I think to keep the quantities and keep the supply as, as fluid as possible, they maintain the same brand on as many countries as possible. So Fersh became the, you know, it became the name in the UK, which obviously creates a little bit of confusion when you're searching online. However, the latest development, they've gone from giving their guitars, you know, numerical codes and letters and numbers, just like, as I've explained to them, you know, all guitars since the beginning of time um, of, you know, if you think of a, a Gibson acoustic guitar or a uh, famous Taylor guitar or whatever brand you're looking at, they, they have letters and numbers and, and, and as men we kind of like that, I think we're alright with that, letters and numbers, but they had the view, and this is the official view, they had the view that we are artists, we're musicians, we are artistic, 
and artists work with colours. And, and that's the sales pitch, that's what I've got to tell you. And um, it's only because I'm so entrenched into the old model codes that I found it very difficult. Now the other thing that was supposed to happen was, if you look at the, these inlays, it might not look particularly um, different to you or anything special, but these inlays are special to me, because I've sold this guitar, <laughs> this is my baby, I've sold this guitar for over a decade, and it's always had these inlays, and the new models have what they call halo, circle, circular inlays. And um, I've got to be honest again, they've certainly grown on me, I don't have any great issue with them at all, but I really did have an issue with the guitar being rebranded as a yellow series guitar. But the only difference, the only credible difference was the fact that you've got these new inlays. And for me, it was just too much. I, I, I couldn't feign enthusiasm for a, a visual aspect, which is actually quite impacting on how the guitar looks, that I wasn't so keen on. As I say, I, it's because I grew up with a certain look and I get used to it. And, and I just figured that I don't want to be forced to be enthusiastic about something that I just don't love, you know, and at that time I didn't. Um, but bless them, they were amazing. The guys at first were absolutely fantastic and they made me this one. So I still have constant supply of the old inlay model. So this is the original inlay. Um, so I don't even get that, but um, they're, they're beautiful. I think it's subtle and really lovely and it's something that I don't want to be without. So they've kept the inlay for me. So, so the, the, the G23 CRC, as it was once called, is now called the Fersh Yellow Series. So Yellow Series is the same cosmetic specification as the 23, the, the series that was called the 24. They, they are the same guitar. Um, but, um, but it's a guitar that I think is just sings to me. Just, I love it. Um, what was I going to do then? I don't know. Yeah, so um, it, it, it's just a guitar that I absolutely love. I, I always said to my um, uh, anyone who comes in, if you play a G chord, you just play that G chord or whatever you want to, whatever chord you want to play. If, it, if, if a guitar of this style has something about it, you will just... You, you'll, you'll hear it in a new way. It'll just speak to you. It'll just say something that you've just not heard before. Yet it's the same chord. Um, and it, there you go. It's got the rosewood, uh, the rosewood back and sides. Tortoiseshell sort of inlay. Um, you've got a little abalone bit on going on there. But you should find loads of um, video... Um, uh, information on this model it's because it's been such a popular model for so many years and it's been my go-to recommendation that's 1699 that is my baby that I will recommend to people whenever I can possibly get my hands on one that's the that's the guitar that you know somebody um, asks the, the the views and the heartfelt feelings I have about all these subjects remain absolutely 100% and um, it's really important for yourself to, exp all I'm really ever saying in these videos, however long-winded they are, is experience these things for yourself. And, and as well as listening to people like myself and listening to other people, you've got to also you know, believe in your own thoughts and your own views on stuff as well. So there we go, that's the um, G, uh, the, now it's now called the, Fe the first yellow GCRC. <laughs> I think that's about it. I think that's all I'm going to tell you about it. Um, so, um, and a bit of a potted history of my relationship with first guitars. And I'm really hoping to bring you a lot more um, of these through the year. I'll, I'll mention, um, but that's my baby, the, 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 uh, the Yellow Series. Okay, cheers then. Happy New Year and uh, hope to see you soon. Okay, bye.